I'd like to show you how you can use a base as a catalyst to increase the rate of the reaction that goes on inside a light stick. When a light stick is snapped, there are chemicals inside the light stick that are mixed, and when those chemicals are mixed, they undergo a chemical reaction. The two chemicals that are involved in the chemical reaction, or that are reactants, are a phenyloxylate derivative and hydrogen peroxide. When those two reactants combine, they chemically react and they produce carbon dioxide gas. They also produce a phenol derivative and they produce quite a bit of energy. And that energy is given off, some of it's given off as light. Now this reaction is catalyzed by base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add some different bases to uh, these light sticks, the fluid in the light sticks, and see what happens. So to do so, I'm going to take a pair of uh, PVC pipe cutters and open up each of my light sticks. And then I'm going to pour the contents of each light stick into three separate test tubes. Now you can use scissors to do this, but I happen to find that using um, PVC pipe cutters works a lot better. Okay, so to this test tube over here on the left, I'm going to make no further additions. That's going to be our control test tube. To our middle test tube here, I'm going to add a base that's easily found around the home, baking soda. It's also known as sodium bicarbonate. Well, sodium bicarbonate is going to be the chemical name of baking soda. I'm going to go ahead and add some baking soda from a scupula and see what happens. Give that a swirl. And you can see pretty easily that that middle test tube is the contents of the middle test tube are glowing more brightly than the two test tubes on either side. Now baking soda is not a reactant of this particular reaction, but its addition is certainly increasing the rate of reaction that we're observing. And so we can say that uh, baking soda, or a base, it's actually the base that's doing it, the base is catalyzing the reaction. It's increasing the rate of the reaction simply by being, uh, by being added. Now to the test tube on the right, I'm going to add some sodium salicylate. Sodium salicylate is also a base. This one's not easily found around the home. I had to purchase my sodium salicylate from a science supply house. I'm going to go ahead and add this to the test tube on the right. Swirl and we see a much faster reaction is going, uh, looking very bright. I also see some foaming that's occurring. That foaming is indicative of the production of carbon dioxide. Remember that carbon dioxide is a product and so if we're producing a lot of CO2 that's going to be producing a lot of gas and so you're probably going to see some foam, some bubbles being produced very quickly. You might also notice that that test tube on the right is now no longer glowing. In fact, the salicylate catalyzed the reaction to go so quickly that the reactants have been consumed. And the reaction is now no longer taking place because it's gone to completion. So the salicylate did a very good job of catalyzing the reaction. We know that because we saw a bright flash. We saw a lot of foam being produced. And in addition to that, the light went out. The reaction went so fast that the reaction stopped. Now I'm going to pull this test tube up to the camera, and I want you to look at the surface of the test tube and look for the presence of any bubbles, which would be indicative of the production of carbon dioxide. I don't see too many here. That doesn't mean carbon dioxide is not being produced. Of course it is if the reaction is going on. It's just not being produced quickly enough to the point where we can see bubbles. Let's look at this middle test tube. 
which is glowing a little bit more brightly than the one on the left. And if I pull this up on the surface, I see bubbles. And those bubbles are indicative of carbon dioxide production. In this case, the carbon dioxide is being produced quickly enough as a result of the addition of the catalyst that bubbles are forming on the surface. We can see that there. And then this test tube on the right, which has gone to completion, if I pull this up, we see a lot of residue on the surface. That was from the foam produces the carbon dioxide. And look at all the carbon dioxide that we see on the surface. If I get that just right, you may be able to see it bubbling through on the bottom. Well, I can see it. Let me pull this light up here from this other test tube and hold it to the back. You may be able to see Yep, you can see little pieces of the salicylate rising to the surface and then falling back down. What's happening there is carbon dioxide bubbles are adhering to flecks of the sodium salicylate causing them to be less dense. They rise to the surface where the um, carbon dioxide bubbles pop and then the um, sodium salicylate pieces will uh, sink back down after the carbon dioxide that's adhered to them is released and the density of the salicylate uh, causes it to fall back down. But you can certainly see there's a ton of carbon dioxide that has been produced in this particular test tube. You can only see that because I'm illuminating it from the back uh, with uh, a separate test tube that's still giving off light. This particular test tube, however, is no longer emitting any light because the reaction's over. The catalyst worked so well, the salicylate catalyst worked so well, that the reaction just went to completion. And we're now no longer getting any light from it. I think the salicylate catalyst works better uh, because salicylate dissolves better in the light stick fluid than, uh, than bicarbonate. I'm not sure about that, but that, that's my guess.